Today I'm going to show you how to use Canva for Instagram infographics. We're going to create a great eye-catching infographic that's guaranteed to increase the engagement on your Instagram feed. This is the first video of a quick series on how to use Canva for Instagram. My name is Tanya, also known as Your Marketing Lady. And this channel is all about helping you with some of the best online marketing strategies and tools for your business. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my future videos and tips. Now the first type of Instagram post I'm going to show you how to create is an infographic. So I've previously created one. Let me go ahead and open it here. I'm going to dissect this and show you how to do this from start to finish. So I'm going to work backwards to show you how I came up with this design and show you step by step how you can create something like this for your business. I started with a template and that's how I like to create a lot of my designs. I'll go through and see if there's something that catches my eye and kind of falls in line with the theme that I want to represent in the post. This was something that I thought looked nice as far as a background, so I wanted to keep this background, but I didn't want to use any of the other elements. So all I did, just selected and deleted all of the other elements on this page so that I was just left with a blank background. And that's how I wanted to get started with this. So there we go, we've got the blank background to get started. Now I started with the text. I already had the idea of the information that I wanted on here. So what I wanted to do from that point was just come up with the design. So I started with the text, went over to elements and just clicked on a text box, text. And I like clean fonts. That's one of the things that I will recommend to you. You want to use a font that's something clean because if you use fonts that are kind of hard to read, um, especially for a headline, that's not going to catch someone's attention. So I decided to go with the Oswald font. For me, this is something that's clean and very easy to read. So I'm going to center this. What I decided to do was go a little bolder so that again, it could be uh, something that catches attention and be easily read. I also added some effects on here. And these effects are available in uh, the Pro Edition. First thing I did was change that background color on the shadow. And then you can just play around with the offset, the direction, and transparency to your liking. For me, I like to get something that just pops. I'm also going to adjust this line height just a little bit. It's really amazing some of the things you can do on this. Now, as I said, we're going to work backwards. So I had all this on a notepad before I put it into Canva. So I just copy and paste it similar to what I'm doing now. So I added a subheading, then put easily create. I like that open sans. Let me see if that's what I went with there. Nope. So the open sans, I like that it's clean too, but I also actually went with this. Uh, Agrandir, I think that's how you pronounce that. And create a little space there. And again, I just copy and pasted a lot of this, which is what I would advise you to do. And then one of the great things about this is that after you're finished, you can easily save this as a template. Select all of this, copy, paste. And I numbered these. And for this portion of it, I created the first one and then I just copy and pasted the same text uh, so that I everything had the exact same elements in it. You can also see that Canva does a great job of giving you alignment so that you can really create a design and it looks good visually. 
So once I have the first element of the infographic done, I decided to add an image here underneath to represent that because when you see a lot of infographics, they highlight a bullet point, give you a little information. Then there's an image that adds to that. So what I did, I went to elements and I typed in quotes. You can see Canva gives you a ton of different things that you can do or you utilize. So I decided to go with this live and learn and just placed it right underneath the uh, quote for Instagram and line that up so that it looks good to me visually. Next thing I did, do the same thing. I copied and pasted this from my notepad as I mentioned. And what I did on here, I just duplicate by clicking duplicate. That way you can make sure the font sizes are all the exact same and you don't run in, into any problems that way. And again, I like to line it up, make sure again, it looks good visually and it aligns correctly. For this element, I typed in videos and you can see how easy this is to do and get started with. It's just a matter of using your imagination, picking some elements that stand out to you, uh, lining them up so it looks good visually, and then just going from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in these next three, and I'm gonna speed this up because you kinda have a gist of how that went. By the way, what feature of Canva would you like to learn more about? Leave me a comment below, I'd love to know. Now for this element, as far as the flowers, I'm gonna show you how I came up with that. I went to the home page and I picked animated social media. This is a tip I'll share with you. You don't have to stick to just the designs that Canva gives you. You can take these apart and use different elements. I like the flowers on here. So in order to place this in my design, what I did, I hit copy, which is control C. And then I went back to my design and clicked on control V and that will paste it and then just size the elements to my liking. And it fits there great. Gonna move this up a little bit. And there you have a whole nother great element that didn't take any time to do. It was just a matter of going through, finding something that you liked, click on it, copy, and paste it into your design. How, how much easier can that get? For the infographics image, I decided to again stick with my elements and type in infographic. I kind of like this one better, so I think I'm gonna switch this and go here. Carousel post on here, what I did, I typed in photos. And I like this one, so I went with this image. Just click and drag here. Get it right there and line those up. And that's it. Easy way to create some great looking infographics. I'm gonna resize this. You just work with the elements to make sure they look like you want them to look on the page. One other thing I decided to do, which I do a lot on my post, I will put a watermark on there. I've got my logos saved in folders. If you watched my last video on um, an overview of Canva, which gives you a view of the dashboard, you know where the logos are and how to store those. If you didn't see that video, I'm gonna leave a link to it in this video. So I'm gonna use my watermark here. I'll just size it down, align it, I'm also gonna adjust this transparency because I just want it to kind of be in the background, but I do want it there so it shows up, but it's really subtle. Another thing I did on here, I decided to look for a button because I want to draw attention to this part of the post so that people can click a link in the bio to see the full video. 
So I just went back to elements and then just scrolled through. I found this. You can see this is a pro version or a pro feature. This is what I love about this particular program. A lot of these features and the things that you have access to, in my opinion, they're totally worth it when you talk about 12 bucks a month. Then I'll just copy and paste this. and align it. And as I mentioned, I had all of these elements already on another uh, piece of paper. They were in my notes, actually, on my notes app on my iPhone. So all I had to do was just copy and paste and drag all of the info over so it doesn't take a whole lot of time to create this. Going back to create this little arrow here, I did the same thing as I did with the flowers. I went and looked in the animations to see if I could find something that had a nice looking arrow. And here's the arrow. So again, all you wanna do is select it, hit Control C, go back to your original design and hit Control V. So once I've got this in my design, I'm going to edit this, I'll rotate it so it's pointing towards the circle or the button. I'll size it down a little bit. And you can see like Canva is so easy to use and really get some great graphics without taking a lot of time. So there you have it. How to use Canva for Instagram infographics. I hope this helped you. If it did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. I've actually got another part to this video coming up next week where we're gonna explore carousel Instagram posts and animated Instagram posts. Be sure you tune in so you don't miss the next video.